And you know what? Let me use that now as a segue to our main topic today, talking about traditions that are still alive. We are filming this the day after the Philadelphia 76ers. Rashid's Philadelphia 76ers have been eliminated from the NBA playoffs once again in dramatic fashion. And even before I get to the question in the topic sheet, I was talking with some 76ers fans last night during my postgame show, and we were giving like gold, silver, bronze medals away to the most devastating playoff losses in process history, meaning in the Joel Embiid era. And it's a consensus that the Toronto, the Kawhi Leonard shot in the corner is still number one. Uh, some people were trying to argue this yesterday felt like number two. I don't know if I share that same sentiment. I had the Ben Simmons game where he didn't shoot the layup against Atlanta at home in game seven when they were favored. There was more of an expectation there. And then ultimately this game yesterday. But following those moments of demise is or paralleling those is the history of Doc Rivers dating back to, let's call it the, the Lob City Clipper days going back to 2015. There's so many stats out there, but he hasn't won a game in which he's had an opportunity to close out a series to go to the conference finals. I think since 2015, he's oh for his last 10. Like, I don't even know which of these stats are true, but you name it. And he has simply just struggled to close out series with leads extensively in a massive sample size. And I'm leading off the show with this topic in question, because for those of you watching, I haven't soon forgotten that the man on the other side of the screen here played for Doc Rivers on a team. Now, they made it to the finals. They ultimately lost to the Los Angeles Lakers in a dramatic. I mean, that could have gone either way if Meta World Peace decides to not make one big shot. But this is just a very long winded way of me getting to the question here, which is. Rashid, you've been in the trenches in the, some of the biggest games of both of your careers in you and Doc Rivers. The first thing I want to ask you is about the narrative going around the internet right now is Doc Rivers just doesn't make any adjustments. Doc Rivers is a choker. Doc Rivers is this and that. Can you set the record straight before I even start interrogating you and just give me an opening statement on Doc Rivers as a head coach? Well, on Glenn Rivers, a.k.a. Glenn Shivers, a.k.a. Glenn Quivers. Yeah, he's a uh, he's I have to agree with your statement there. He doesn't make adjustments. Um, and that's that's just from being in the locker room with him uh, for that one season. And just again, I'm sitting back and I'm just, you know, looking and recognizing about everything. But man, it's, it's that seems to always be his biggest knock that he doesn't make adjustments when it comes to crunch time. You know, if 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 his team is up, you know, significantly 15, 20 points, then okay, you, you don't really have to coach shit then. But when you're in the trenches and you're going against another team and another good coach, then, hey, yeah, it's, it's, it comes down to not only just your all-star caliber players, but your all-star caliber coaches as well, <clears throat> excuse me, who can recognize – okay, we need to block out more, we need to double this or do this, do that. But the, to me, the adjustment thing is not there for him because, mm. in my opinion, when we were in Boston, Thibodeau had defense. And uh, what was Kevin? I can't remember Kevin's last name, but he, he pretty much was the offensive coordinator for the Celtics. Um, you know, when they went on that championship run from, what, like 08 to maybe 10 or 11. So... But you got to be more than a locker room manager on the floor. And then that's what it is. Like, the adjustments, you know, if, if you see that, okay, a certain player can't stop a certain player, don't keep that motherfucker on him. Yo, sub his ass out or go to a zone or double team. You got to do something. Do something outside of the box that's going to throw the other team in shambles. If not, we're going to have what we had again the other night. And I know... I'm tired. I'm a diehard Sixers fan. I'm tired of this shit. I know that. I can tell you that. And I told people, going back to what you said, even about Ben Simmons, I told people in Philly, look, we shouldn't waste that number one pick on him. Everybody in Philly, oh, shit, you a hater. Quit hating on the young boy. Doing this, doing that. Now, look, when, when we got Glenn Rivers for the coach, oh, I'm telling people in Philly, oh, man, this shit right here is going to be this, it's going to be that. Nobody wanted to believe me. Now look. Same thing with Honeybun. Honeybun Harden. He said no, it was bad for him to come to Philly, in my opinion. 
It was bad for him to come to Philly. It wasn't his. It wasn't the type of team he was used to. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if he had that maturation to be the Robin to and be being Batman. Because in Houston, we all know it was the James Harden show down there. That man could do whatever he want when he was in Houston. But now when you go to another team that already has, a, you know, a main guy, an all-star, then, yeah, that's, your, your basketball IQ should tell you something. Like, all right, look, I'm following behind big fella. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to come with my regular game. I got to adjust my game for him because now I'm playing with a top-notch center, one of the best centers in the league. But, man, the shit is just frustrating, bro. It's frustrating.